Thank you very much. Good afternoon to, for, to everybody. I'm um, going to speak about the situation concerning xenophobia and anti-immigrant sentiments in Hungary uh, upon the example of the um, refugee and migrant crisis. Um, I'm one of the co-authors of the report on Hungary and my colleague Ildiko Barna will present tomorrow the results concerning anti-Semitic sentiments. Um, so, um, as I just said, I'm concentrating only on, um, on um, anti-immigrant sentiments in Hungary. Um, to start the topic, I would like to um, start with the initial situation before the, um, before the crisis. Um, um, this, the Central Eastern European region, and especially Hungary, is um, probably infamous for its uh, high level of, of xenophobia. Um, on this map you can see the um, ratio of welfare chauvinists, as we call them, um, in, in Europe. Um, we produced um, an index, it's, it's called Demand for Right-Wing Extremism Index, and one of the subcategories of this index is, is the welfare chauvinists. So this ratio um, shows you how um, what um, percent of the population is open to far-right um, ideologies, and um, in this case, in the case of uh, ratio of welfare chauvinists, is, is, um, the map shows you the ratio of um, the people in um, societies who are, um, 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 well, who share um, prejudices and share xenophobic sentiments. Um, in, in 2014, in case of Hungary, the ratio was uh, 45%. In other Central Eastern European countries, like in Poland, it was the lowest like, with um, uh, 18%. Um, in, in Slovakia, it was the second highest with, with 39%. Uh, there are two special features um, of xenophobia in Central Eastern European region. The first special feature is that um, as, a, as just, I just showed, that there is a, a high level of, of uh, anti-immigrant or xenophobic um, sentiments without a significant uh, ratio of immigrant population in these countries. Um, like in Hungary, 0.6% um, of the population um, uh, were born um, outside of the European Union. Um, and still, um, the ratio of, of, an, of um, anti-immigrant or xenophobes are pretty, um, are pretty high. And the second special feature um, in, in our region, in the Central Eastern European region, is that um, these kind of anti-immigrant sentiments are um, not driven um, firstly by far-right parties, by um, anti-establishment forces, but by m mainstream political forces. In Poland, it's the governing party, uh, Law and Order Party. In, in the Czech Republic, the main um, um, proponent of anti-immigrant uh, um, sentiments is, the, is President Milos Zeman. In Slovakia, Prime Minister Robert Fico and his party. And in Hungary, um, it's uh, Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his governing party, Fidesz. Um, so that's why I'm going to speak about um, the anti um, immigrant campaign of the governing party in Hungary um, instead of speaking about the um, far-right party, Jobbik. Um, so the Fidesz, the governing party Fidesz, um, started a, a pretty harsh anti-immigrant uh, campaign. Um, and the interesting thing about this campaign was that it, it, it had been um, started well before the first uh, refugees arrived to Hungary. The campaign um, started right after, after the Charlie Hebdo attack um, in January 2015. Um, and this kind of, uh, the campaign um, consisted of all kind of um, elements which are usually um, a part of far-right rhetoric and far-right um, ideologies. Um, uh, the campaign um, aimed at mongering economic, cultural, uh, health, health, and security fears. Um, interesting was the word choice. Instead of refugees, uh, our prime minister and 
actually all the politicians of the governing party, they never mentioned the word refugees, they only um, used the word economic immigrants. Um, um, they wanted to show the Hungarian population that um, the people are not fleeing war, um, they are just coming to Europe um, um, to steal the jobs of Hungarians and, and of other European nations. Um, there was, um, and there is actually um, a strong uh, tendency to securitization that all the problems, all, all the topic uh, connected to refugees and, and migration um, are framed within the context of cr criminality and terrorism. There is also a cultural and the racist aspect. Uh, Prime Minister Viktor Orban tends to say that um, he is defending and his government is defending um, Christian values in Europe um, against uh, Muslim immigrants um, who, and these are the words of one of leading politicians of the governing party, according to him, um, um, migrants and refugees coming to Europe from uh, Muslim countries want to um, um, create a caliphate in Europe. There is also Eurosceptic, a very strong Eurosceptic element um, in this campaign. Um, the governing party s says that it's the fault of the EU that um, so many refugees and migrants come to Europe. They say that the EU was uh, far too soft um, on, on migrants. There is also a very um, um, significant conspiracy element. Um, Fidesz politicians say that the migration is organized by some kind of background powers, by some kind of shady um, people and power. Um, who want to um, undermine Europe and undermine Christian values. And there is also a very strong anti-establishment element, which is, I think, very interesting from a governing party, which has been on the, um, on the political scene for, um, for 25 years. Um, so Prime Minister Orban um, say, says that he's, he's listening to the people of Europe um, and he, he dares to say what other European, other European leaders um, don't dare to say. There were more waves of, of um, the anti-immigrant campaign. I want to show you only two of these waves. Uh, the first um, significant element of the campaign was um, a consultation. They called it a national consultation on immigration and terrorism. You can see that already the framing, the title of this consultation um, um, shows which kind, what kind of rhetoric they use. I don't know how well you can see the, the questions. Um, I especially like uh, questions like, um, um, according to many economic migrants come to Europe to jeopardize, jeopardize the jobs of, uh, of Hungarians. Um, they also say that um, uh, immigrants um, spread diseases, that uh, immigration is linked to terrorism and, and um, and other nice questions like these. And that was the second wave of the, uh, of the campaign. It was launched in June 2015. It was a billboard campaign. Such kind of billboards uh, appeared across the whole um, country in Hungarian language, of course, um, aiming, um, targeting um, refugees, according to, to, to the govern, government politicians. And these billboards uh, were paid by the government, so these were official um, government information billboards. Um, and these billboards um, told that, uh, like the wording is, if you come to Hungary, you shouldn't take the job of Hungarians. Or the other billboard says, if you come to Hungary, you have to, you have to respect our, our culture. Um, so the question is, what is behind, or what was behind um, this, um, this kind of campaign, this kind of rhetoric? Um, it's very clearly politically motivated. Um, at the end of 2014, as I said, uh, a few months uh, before, um, before Prime Minister Viktor Orban started uh, this kind of anti-immigrant rhetoric. Um, so at that time, Fidesz was in a deep crisis for many reasons. There were a lot of corruption um, scandals. Uh, there were internal, internal conflicts within the party. So the government needed a new story to tell the people. And that was the, the new story was that on the one side there is the hung Hungarian government, there, is the, there are the politicians of, of the governing party who are defending uh, the country, who are defending Christian culture and who are defending, defending the European Union. 
against um, immigrants who, as I said, um, spread diseases, come here to um, exploit terrorist acts, um, want to conquer Europe, uh, want to create their own caliphate. And besides immigrants, there is also the liberals um, who want to undermine um, the Christian values of Europe. What were the objectives of the government, of the government's campaign? Um, there were mainly, these were mainly political objectives like restructure and dominate the political agenda to mobilize the voter base by presenting an enemy. These, this enemy was the, uh, were, were mainly the immigrants and um, on the second um, uh, place, the liberals. Um, they also wanted to prevent the far-right party, Jobbik, from capitalizing on the issue, and they um, were very successful in this. Um, Jobbik, um, at the beginning of, of the refugee and migration crisis, Jobbik start, uh, tried to also try to um, exploit the issue, but they really didn't have any chance um, because Fidesz um, um, succeeded in covering the whole topic. Um, and also, um, Fidesz um, tried to exploit the topic in the sense that through anti-terrorist legislation, they tried to gain more, um, more powers. Um, and of course, um, because um, Fidesz uh, thinks that this is the only one um, successful strategy, political strategy for, for the party um, to um, remain in power after the 2018 national elections, um, the efforts will continue to keep this, um, this topic on the political agenda. In October, we will, we might, I mean, might have or we will have referendum on the, on the EU quota system. Of, and of course, the governing party is very much campaigning against the quota system and um, um, want to have um, a, a very strong um, um, campaign against the European Union. Thank you very much.